In the late 90s, I moved to Beijing. It was partly a rebellion from my strict immigrant parents. It was partly a desire to meet some underground filmmakers that I admired. And it was partly because I didn't know what else to do with my life if I wasn't going to be a doctor or a lawyer. After living for a month with my relatives in a courtyard house with no flush toilet or shower, I moved to a lovely one bedroom in a red light district on the edge of town. I did the things single women in cities do. I adopted a cat. I searched for the perfect hairdresser. I went to raves on the Great Wall. But my secret wish was, and here I'm going to read from the book because it's too embarrassing otherwise. My secret wish was to write or make movies. Preferably a novel that would be an instant cult classic among the downtown cognizanti, and or a gritty lo-fi documentary that would make me the darling of the indie film world. These were fragile, vaguely embarrassing dreams, never to be spoken aloud, lest their spell be broken. I met the underground filmmakers, and with their help, started making my own documentary. It was about a three-generation Peking opera family that revolved around its paralyzed patriarch. Nai Nai and Yeye, my grandparents, had lived in Beijing years before. But the whole family had fled for America before the communist takeover. While I lived in Beijing, my parents returned to China for the first time in more than 50 years. Do you floss your teeth? Yeah, don't look at my teeth. No, no, no I mean, do you floss it? Yeah. Why is it It's the water, it doesn't have fluoride. That's why I want all that rinse. Yeah. You know, you know, Yagao has no fluoride. Yagao has fluoride. Nana and Yeye had left behind a courtyard house in the old city. When my parents came, we visited the house. Run down and broken, it was occupied by more than 10 families who'd been moved in during the Cultural Revolution. My relatives said that like many other courtyard houses in the old city, it could be knocked down by the government at any time. Uh, Su Su was born over there because oh. that, that was in mommy's bed. After five years in Beijing, I came back and wrote a book about the crazy city I'd come to love. The book just came out, and I recently got a call from my toughest critic. Hi, Val, it's mom. Hi, how are you doing? Thank you for the book, and I got it at noontime. I've been reading it for the past two hours, and it got through about 60 pages. I am really fascinated by what you did, and I'm not surprised because it sounded like what I, would have, I was doing in the reverse order. Anyway, uh, just want to tell you that uh, you know I really enjoy reading the book, and I'll talk to you later. Okay, love you. Bye. Well, I hope you enjoy it as much as she did.